You know, there's a huge difference between wanting and having. And nothing demonstrates that better than this car, the Land Rover Defender. And this is the newest model in the Defender lineup, the new Defender 130. And I gotta tell you, this car, truck, SUV is cool. It's so cool that I couldn't help but want one of these. And when it first came out, as you probably know, we purchased the 90, which broke down and couldn't be fixed. So we had to get another one from Land Rover, which was broken by the dealer and couldn't be fixed. And so we ended up with a third one, the Defender 110. So we own the 110, we owned the 90, well, at least for 168 miles. And now here's the 130. And what makes this one unique is that it's an eight seater. In fact, I think it's the largest Land Rover ever. It's actually 13.4 inches longer than the Defender 110 and almost 16 inches longer than a Land Rover Discovery, which is well long by any stretch of the imagination. So in this video, let's take this Land Rover Defender for a ride. It's actually the first time I've driven a Defender since we got rid of ours. And if you're wondering what happened to ours, we got rid of it, not because I didn't like it, I still want it, not because, well, it broke down on us, which it didn't, but because we needed to move on to the next car, which is the Bronco. So if you're wondering what happened to our Defender, it basically turned into the Bronco, which we are also selling uh, so that we can move on to the next car because that's what we do. But anyway, let's talk about the newest Defender, this first edition 130. Now, it's expensive. It starts at about $70,000, and as tested, you are looking at a $92,000 vehicle, which seats eight, but still $92,000. And I put together a short list of cars it competes with, and there's a lot of them because three-row SUVs are kind of the thing for 2023, but of course, this is a very off-road worthy one. Land Rover has a reputation for being off-road capable, so in my mind, this competes with kind of three different Jeeps. The Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the Jeep Wagoneer L, which is of course the three row, and even the Grand Wagoneer L, which can get up to about 120, but at 92, you're probably in Grand Wagoneer territory. The Lexus LX, of course the Yukon AT4, the Discovery in the same brand, um, maybe even the Expedition Timberline, which is cheaper, and of course maybe, because if you get the TRD Pro Sequoia, you're also getting up into the high 70s and 80s. So those are kind of the vehicles that it competes against. And there's a lot more in that category that it doesn't compete against. Of course, Mercedes makes one, Audi makes one, BMW makes a three row, but none of them are as off-road worthy as this. So for $92,000, what do you get? Well, first and foremost, you get this Fuji white, which is one of my favorite colors. Once again, I want it. I love it. I'm drawn to it. Jerry McGovern, who designed this car, did a really great job in making it look off-roady, making it look active lifestyle, and making it look youthful, and making it look, well, very desirable. And under the hood, there are a number of engine choices. Uh, there's the uh, one that we had initially, let's start open this, which was a 300 horsepower, but this is the uh, bigger of the two engines. Uh, this is a six cylinder that produces about 400 horsepower and about 400 pound foot of torque paired to an eight speed automatic. It's a mild hybrid and combined, according to the EPA, it gets 19 MPG, which isn't bad for a vehicle that seats so many people. Now, of course, the biggest difference between this and the 90 and the 110 is in the powertrain, uh, but it's the third row. So come out with me and let's try to get in the back row and see just how much room there is. Now we recently tested the Sequoia TRD Pro uh, and in the back row, it wasn't very comfortable if I'm being honest. It was too high. It kind of took stadium seating to the, to the utmost level and it really didn't work. So let me see if I can figure out how this, how this one opens up. So does this work this way? Oh yes, this way, rolls forward. And then we get back here and come on back here, Cole. So we've got two, three, and three. 
And uh, let's close it up. Now keep in mind I'm 6'2", which makes me on the taller side. Uh, this seat does slide forward and backward. And I gotta say, it's not bad. Look, I mean, you know, I've got this weird body where I've got short legs and a long torso, which makes it difficult because usually the roof line is too short. But here, even with the sunroof optional, one, I think it comes standard actually, but you know, massive one for the first two rows. And then of course, one for the third row here. Very comfortable actually. Uh, I could spend time in here. Um, I've got a cup holder right there. And then look at the luxury, I don't know if you can see that, but I even have third row heated seats, which is pretty impressive when uh, chips are hard to come by. Yeah, all in all, it's a very comfortable third row. Uh, and uh, I think you could use this actually for adult seating. Now, there is, of course, always a little kicker, unless you're talking suburban size. The problem with the third row being comfortable for adults means that there's not a lot of room in the back back for luggage. So let's see how much luggage is back there. So I'm going to pop out, and we're going to go open up the back. And let's take a look back here. And yeah, you've got that kind of classic problem where a lot of room for adults, not a lot of room for luggage, uh, especially if you've got eight people. Oh, Jack, I don't know what that was. But then of course you can fold these seats forward and you can fold the second row forward, in which case I'm sure you could live out of this Defender. Now this one has a towing package and I'm not sure how much it tows. We'll have to Google that. I apologize, I should have checked that, but it does have a controlling package, and it does have the recovery hooks, which, if I recall, are not standard. At least they weren't on ours. And, of course, it does have the spare tire on the back, which says the fender. Now, all first edition 130s, I think all 130s actually, come with standard air suspension, which is great uh, for off-roading. Uh, and uh, our... Defender actually had air suspension, but then they got rid of the option or made it optional as opposed to standard. But on the 130, it is standard. And this one came to us with snow tires. Wahoo! Uh, that's pretty great. It doesn't have any of the kind of cool accessories, no ladder, no active box, no roof rack, which I hear whistles, by the way. Uh, but as a family hauler that is capable of taking on the worst that winter has to offer, I think it does really well. Uh, so let's go for a ride and we'll talk about how this thing drives. Okay, now let me pull up here just a little bit. And we'll go over some of the options on this. So like I said, they start about 70,000. I believe this first edition is more like 84,000 starting up. Let me get out of the sun here so we can see see what we're doing here. There we go. Now you can read it. Uh, so, yeah, it's tested price ninety two thousand seven hundred and twenty, uh, and it's got comfort and convenience, which includes premium LED headlights, opening panoramic sunroof, rain sensing wipers, yada yada yada. Uh, but the biggest option package is right here: the towing pack, all terrain progress control, terrain response, configurable terrain response. Advanced towing assist, and of course the cold climate pack, which includes heated windshield, heated water jets, heated, can't even read that, steering wheel, nice, and of course those third row heated seats, 22 inch style five spoke gloss silver wheels, which by the way might be great for on road, but really not great for off road. And that is one of the conundrums of this vehicle. And like I said at the beginning of this video, there's a difference between wanting and having and Land Rover has always had that dichotomy ever since I have been a Land Rover fan let's face it I'm a huge fan of the brand you want the vehicle but then having a vehicle comes with its own set of problems and mainly that has to do with reliability and the cost of maintenance and we've owned a number of Land Rovers over the years uh, we had a Disco 2, a Land Rover LR3, um, of course a Defender, uh, and they all uh, have had issues 
of one kind or another. Um, I think that most people are very comfortable owning one of these vehicles as long as it's under warranty. But once they go off warranty, at least according to the market, the prices do plummet. And, and I know what I'm speaking about because I've been out there on Craigslist looking for an LR4, which is now granted a seven or eight or nine year vehicle, nine year old vehicle. Uh, and you can get a nicely equipped LR4 uh, in Fuji white, which is one of my favorite colors actually. So thank you Land Rover for thinking of that. You can get one of these for around 19 to $20,000. And considering that those vehicles new were, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars to to drop down to twenty thousand or less in a matter of a decade is kind of telling about what people think is the value of this vehicle once you're out of warranty. All right, so let's talk about the driving experience. Uh, it drives very well, hundred and uh, four hundred horsepower, four hundred pound foot of torque, about give or take. It's certainly plenty of power. Uh, to move a vehicle this long. You do lose a little bit of off-roadiness uh, because the departure and approach angles are just a little bit less uh, than the 110 because of course it's a little bit longer. Where you really lose it is on the breakover angle uh, and that's where this suffers a little bit. But gosh, if you're taking a Land Rover 130 off-road or if you're taking it, dare I say, rock crawling, you're probably in the wrong vehicle. I mean, look, Defender, of course, as a nameplate, has a reputation, especially the previous one, for being a Jeep Wrangler competitor. But I, I think at this point, we all know, and we certainly know with our experiences of taking it off-road, uh, that while this looks very off-roady, and it has a lot of the off-road tech here, terrain response, um, it's not a Jeep Wrangler competitor. It's not a Bronco competitor. It's a vehicle that was designed for the UK and for American highways, school duty, mall duty, to look rugged, but for serious off-roading. And I'm sure that the fine engineers at Defender and the Land Rover would disagree with me but I think at that point, it, it's not quite as off-road capable. You may be wondering, well, is that a bad thing or a good thing? And I would argue that, you know, do you want to design a vehicle, an engineer vehicle, for the way that 5% of the people use it? Or do you want to design an engineer for the way that 95% of the people use it? And I think in this case, while it is very good at ferrying you and your loved ones, to your winter cabin and if the snow falls you'll be fine uh, and if you take it into the sand you'll be fine but if you really want to convert it to a serious off-roader slash overlander there are probably better choices out there uh, just because well you can see the 22 inch wheels 22 inch wheels are horrible off-road there's no sidewall it's, it's this big it makes it easy to puncture like we did and it makes it uh, very uncomfortable off-road so, but as an on-roader give it the beans there goes a seat. It moves along quite well. And you know what? I can't really uh, complain about the uh, extra length of this vehicle because to me it feels just like driving the 110 with more room. So in a way, it's like a more practical 110. Now, the air suspension gives it a very smooth ride off-road. Uh, I do love the interior design of this. I mean, it looks and is, for the most part, uh, very rugged. We've got these exposed torques, uh, which you know are symbolic of what this thing's kind of soul is. You also have um, a steering wheel that is nice and thick and leather. Now you've got Apple CarPlay, uh, you know, controls that are easily understandable. And like most modern cars, uh, you have real buttons that do real things as opposed to haptic buttons that do haptic things. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you've got this really good parcel shelf here which was always one of my favorites and the steering wheel that looks like you know it could take on uh, the African subcontinent uh, with no problem and get you back uh, to civilization 
when you're uh, off-roading in the deepest dark. I just don't want to pick on Africa, South America, even America or Canada. All right, let's see the turning radius because this is a, an important feature for a vehicle that will do school duty. So I'm kind of here at this dead end road. I'm going through the snow and thank God I've got snow tires on standard all wheel drive. So let's see if I can make this turn. And uh, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. When you've got a long vehicle, you can have a much longer turning radius. I did go off the road, but no problem getting back on the road. Good camera work here, so you can uh, see what's behind you. Uh, you've got a 360 degree panoramic view as well. You've got an off-road mode here, which remember, locking center diff in this one. Uh, and then for towing, it'll show you, it shows you what's behind you, which is nice. Uh, so let's go back to on-road. Uh, and there you go, you can see what way the wheels are pointing, your sensors. And then these cameras are always cool because it's got this virtual way of showing the vehicle. And by the way, this is one of the things that went wrong in ours. Um, this stopped working. Uh, and I think initially, especially on the first run, there were some um, bugs that the system had that I think they've worked out since then. All right. It's a very quiet turn signal, by the way. I can't even hear it. Very quiet indeed. All right. So back on the road. Um, we just got this car from uh, the fleet service and it shows it's getting 16.7 mpg which makes sense if it's 19 combined so probably a little bit better on the highway uh, full tank about 350 miles of range which is really good and uh, this car has a total of a thousand miles on it uh, which is not a lot um, now one of the other things that i love about this vehicle is of course the command driving position position i think that's what land rover calls it where you feel like you're sitting on top of the car it's not quite as prominent as it was on the lr4 or even to some extent in the discovery but you still feel like you're sitting on top of the car and you're looking over the hood i drive a lot of pickup trucks and it's almost impossible to see over the front of a pickup truck but this car no problem whatsoever um, and that's always good when you're on road and it's even better when you're off road so i do love the seating position i do love the seats uh, in this first edition, we've got leather. Uh, in our Land Rover, we had this kind of uh, cloth material that started to actually show some wear and tear and dirt in the time that we had it. So, you know, there's a lot to be said for leather because it does wear very well. And of course, uh, in terms of just straight up design, um, Jerry McGovern did an incredible job in, in making this both elegant and um, simple and that's a very those are very two very hard things to put together in one sentence let alone in one vehicle where it's relatively straightforward but it doesn't feel like an economy car it feels like thought went into where all the controls are and thought went into making it logical and yet premium uh, and I certainly feel that in this vehicle. Now, uh, we just got this vehicle. This is our first time behind the wheel, and I wanted to kind of take you guys on a ride along with me because um, before we take it off-road, I kind of wanted to let you know what happened uh, to the previous one because we didn't really do much of a uh, video after that one uh, because we kind of quickly moved on to the uh, Bronco. Uh, but um, now that we've got our hands now that I've got my hands back on a Defender, uh, I gotta tell you, it's it's bringing back a lot of good memories and some bad ones, but a lot of good ones. I, I know why I fell in love with this car. I, I understand why this car is ultimately so cool and so desirable. And the thing I want to get to uh, before you know we give this up again, well, we'll keep it for a week, is you know is having. A defender as good as wanting a defender and because of what happened with our previous one or previous three really I never really had a chance to answer that you know uh, we had the vehicle I was super excited when we bought it there's that first drive video where myself and Tommy get behind the wheel and the defender is everything I hoped it to be and then we took it off-road and it left us disappointed and then of course um, 
you know, it didn't necessarily live up to the expectations because, you know, we had to go through a number of them, but that doesn't make it any less desirable. And just because we had an experience like that doesn't mean that you would have that same experience. Our experience was, you know, with the, there's that rule, right? You're never supposed to buy the very first year of production, let alone the first few cars of a new factory that they've built specifically for this in Europe. Uh, and so I'm super happy to finally get our hands on this and really we'll do another video where we take it off road and hopefully we'll get to that question is having as good as wanting because right now I find myself wanting this again um, kind of like an old girlfriend that you broke up with but you're not sure why if, if you know that feeling anyway um, stay tuned over at TFL off-road all tfl.com we'll take this off-road and uh, We'll uh, try to get to the bottom of it. As always, this is Roman. See you next time. Ciao.